Hi. Now I've got another question here which I'm going to show you how to tackle by the work energy principle. And after I've done this particular problem, I'll show you how you can also do it by using the equations of constant acceleration, often known as the SUVAT equation, so you can compare methods. But what we've got here is a particle of mass 6 kilograms is projected down a rough slope inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal with a speed of 2 meters per second. And if the coefficient of friction between the slope and the particle is 0 0.25, find the speed of the particle after it's traveled a distance of 4 meters down the line of greatest slope. Well. Because it's a rough slope, first of all, we ought to put some forces acting on this particle. So if we take it in its general sense here, somewhere in between the start and the finish, we've got the weight that acts downwards, that's going to be mg or 6g newtons. Normal contact force, that's going to be r, say, r newtons. And we've got the frictional force. So we'll have that acting back up the slope, opposing the direction of motion, and that would be F newtons. Now, when we use the work energy principle, what we've got is the change in the total energy of a particle is equal to the work done on the particle. I'm going to use this principle rather than the conservation of mechanical energy purely because we've got friction involved, a resistance to motion. So first of all then, let's have a look at the gain in kinetic energy, right? Ke for short. It's gain kinetic energy as it slides down the plane. The final kinetic energy is going to be obviously greater than the initial one, so we start with that, so it equals a half mv squared half m, m being the 6, so, and then we've got v squared, minus the initial kinetic energy of a half m v squared, but we've got a half multiplied by 6, but the initial velocity down the plane was 2, so that's going to be 2 squared. And if we work that out, we get 3 v squared for the first term, and then minus 12. And that'll be measured in the units of joules. Okay, so that's the gaining kinetic energy as we go down the slope. Now, what about the loss in gravitational potential energy as it falls? It falls a distance h. So we need to find out what this height is above this level here. We'll take this as our zero level. It's always best to take the lowest level is your zero level in a problem. So if this is h, we've done this in the past from triangles like this in previous videos, just use basic trigonometry and we have that the sine of 30 degrees equals the opposite side h over the hypotenuse of 4. Okay, Multiply both sides by 4 and you get that therefore h equals 4 sine 30 degrees and if you work that out you get two, two meters exactly, okay? So we've got a height here of two meters. So when it comes to looking at the loss in gravitational potential energy, GPE for short, then remember gravitational potential energy is mgh, so we've got m being the six multiplied by g, okay, multiplied by h, h being 2. So that's our loss in gravitational potential energy. As it goes down the slope, it loses this height here, okay? So we need to look now at the change in the total energy. So Let's just use this work energy principle. Let's just put it down here that the change in energy, 
right, is going to be equal to the work done on the particle, which is going to be the work done against resistance, okay, or friction. Let's just put here equals work done against, we'll say friction, okay. Now, what is that work done against friction going to be? Well, it's going to be the force times the distance moved, F times 4. So it equals F times 4 for now. And as for the change in energy, well, the change in energy is going to have to be the loss in gravitational potential energy minus the gain in kinetic energy. And you've got to be very careful here. It's not the gain in kinetic energy minus the loss in gravitational potential energy because some of that kinetic energy has been given up into doing work against friction because of the rough slope. So therefore it's this value which will be greater than this value and we want a positive quantity out. Okay, so take care over that bit. So it's going to be the 6 times g times 2, which comes out actually at 117.6 joules. So put that in there as 117.6. And then we've got to take away the 3v squared. So I'll put that in brackets, minus 12. All right. So... When it comes to working this out, we've got a slight problem because we don't know what F is. So how are we going to get this frictional force? Well, we know that friction is limiting, so F must equal mu R. We need to get R, the contact force, so first of all then we're going to need to resolve. Resolve, say, away from the plane as being positive. And if we do that, in the usual way, this angle in here, if we project down here, this will be the angle 30 degrees, the same as the angle of the plane. So if we resolve outwards, we've got R minus 6G cosine of 30 degrees. And this will equal zero, because it's in relative equilibrium here. There's no resultant force out. Okay, so... Therefore, if we rearrange this, we get that R equals 6G cos 30. 6G cos 30, just pop that in there. And we know then that F equals mu R. We know that mu is 0 0.25, and we've now got R as being 6G cos 30 degrees. And if you work that out, you end up with... 12.7305 and so on and that will be measured in newtons. So we can now finish this off. Okay, So if we just, just draw a line down there I'll have to obviously remove that. So if we were to expand this bracket we've got 117.6 minus minus 12 well that's going to therefore give us 129 0.6 and then we've got minus 3v squared equals f which we now know is 12.7305 and so on and that's multiplied by the 4. Well if we simplify this we end up with 129.6 then minus 3v squared equals multiply that out you end up with 50 point nine two two nine and so on and then if we add three v squared to both sides and subtract fifty point nine two two nine from both sides and also divide by three I'll leave it up to you you'll end up with v squared equaling twenty six point two two five nine and so on take the square root to get v and then you'll have 5.1211 and so on, which if we round that, say, to two significant figures, it's going to be 5.1. 5.1 meters per second then to two significant figures. So that's basically then how you apply the work energy principle. 
but as I say, you've got to be very careful over this stretch here, knowing that the loss in gravitational potential energy is going to be greater than the gain in kinetic energy, because some of that kinetic energy is given up to doing work against the resistance. Okay, now this is one way of doing it, the work energy principle. The other way is by doing it by constant acceleration formulae. And I'll run through that for you now. Now we've already found out the frictional force given by mu r. We resolved, remember, perpendicular to plane and got that r was equal to 6g cos 30 degrees. Put it back into this equation and got our frictional force as 12.7305 and so on newtons. But now we need to get the acceleration down the plane. So what we can do is we'll mark that acceleration in with a double arrow there. We'll call it a meters per second per second. And that means then that if we resolve down the plane, let's just do it down here, resolving the direction of motion, taking that as plus, then we've got 6g times the sine of 30 degrees, that's the only force acting down the plane, and then we've got the friction acting up the plane of 12.7305, it's going to be minus though because it acts up the plane, minus 12.7305 and so on, and that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration, so that's going to be the mass 6 times the acceleration A. So if you work that out, you end up with that 6a equals 16.6694 and so on. Divide both sides by 6 and you get a equals 2.7782 and so on. Meters per second per second. So we've got our acceleration now and so therefore we can just follow this on and if we take downwards as positive, we can use our equation for constant acceleration, SUVAT. Okay? So what do we know? S the displacement, well that's going to be 4 meters. U the initial velocity is going to be 2 meters per second. Final velocity, well that's what we're trying to find. Acceleration, 2.7782 and so on meters per second per second and time well we don't know that we don't want it so what are we going to use to do something like this well we want the equation that leaves out t and it's got to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as so therefore if we substitute our values in u squared then is 2 squared plus 2 times the acceleration we've seen is 2.7782 and so on and s is 4. So if you work that out you'll end up with 26.2259 and so on and then all we need to do is take the square root to this and so therefore v equals the square root of 26.22 and so on it comes out at 5.1211 and so on and so therefore if we round this up to say two signal figures 5.1 then meters per second to 2 SF. Same answer obviously as we had before but by using our equations for constant acceleration. So hopefully that gives you an idea of an alternative way then of doing this. The alternative way then being the work energy principle. We'll just bring that back for you to look over again. There it is. Okay, so as usual I hope that's been of some use to you. Now in the next video what I'm going to do is look at motion on a slope but this time the slope will not be a straight line. It will be a curvy line. Okay, we're going to have a skier going down a curved slope. I'll show you how to handle problems like that. Okay?